Hey guys, it's Joe from VMP. Today I'm going to talk to you briefly about some of the fuel system stuff you deal with on 11 to 17 Coyotes, a little bit on GT500s, and what the an example of the ultimate solution for fuel system problems is. So on our left here we have a 2011, 2011 to 2017 Ford Mustang GT fuel pump assembly. This is the float, the sending unit and float assembly. This is your regulator and this is your fuel pump. Um, Essentially, this, this setup on the right configuration uh, will generally start to drop pressure very rapidly around the 650 horsepower level without the use of one of these. This is a VMP fuel pump booster for the 11 to 17 Mustangs. I believe it's 359. The price may change when you're watching this. Um, just depends on what the market's like at the point in time and what our costs and stuff are. But at the end of the day, around 360 bucks to get more out of your factory fuel pump assembly. Uh, if you buy this for the 11 to 17 Mustang, we include a plug and play harness assembly that plugs in line that this boosts the current, or not the current, the voltage going into the pump, which helps extend the amount of usable horsepower range you can achieve by increasing the amount of pressure the pump outputs. And this is something that you can verify by use of a fuel pressure gauge or a fuel pressure sending unit on the car. At higher fuel flows is gonna be the easiest way to describe this stuff. At higher fuel flows, the booster allows the pump to maintain pressure better. Uh, if, you, if you're gonna be up over that 600 horsepower level to the wheels on a, a what we'll call 11 to 17 Coyote, having a fuel pump booster on that car is gonna be critical if you're not doing anything with the fuel pump inside this hat assembly. And the next logical step, once you max that out, which will usually occur around 750 horsepower, you'll start getting a rapid decrease in fuel pressure again, is gonna be one of these. Um, I'd say that this is like the middle level solution. Uh, depending on what your goals are, this may not be the right solution for you. But just for the sake of argument, this is what seems to come up most often. This is, this hat exactly is not a Siley hat. This is kind of similar to what people do with Siley hats and the like. I think JPC has something similar and uh, Road Heaver and a couple other guys. It's basically a GT500 or GT350 fuel hat that's been modified to be made a return fuel system. Um, as you can see, a sending unit similar to the GT, a little bit different. The basket's very similar. It just has two fuel pumps inside it instead of the one, and the fuel pumps are a different model than these are. But these will usually get you to about 800, uh, and we'll call it 800, 850 wheel on a boosted S550 with a, or boosted S197 with a return fuel system setup. Um, and that'd be on E85, of course. If you were just running a gasoline-based fuel, your headroom would be a bit higher. But these also have their limits. I've seen some people say they're good to 1,000. I've never seen them actually make fuel pressure at 1,000 wheel horsepower, but that's not to say that on certain combos you might not be able to get it to work on like a gasoline-based fuel as opposed to E85. This all the way to the right here is gonna end up being the ultimate and final solution. Not necessarily this brand, but a return style fuel system hat that's dedicated for ultimate fuel flow instead of a factory style setup that's been made to work at higher levels or just kind of, I don't want to say band-aid because they do work well, but it's what I'd consider to be between an aftermarket fuel hat that's designed with big aftermarket pumps in mind. Like this example right here has two of the Walbrill 274 model pumps, which are 465 liter per hour high pressure pumps. This is ultimately going to support what 99% of people setups are going to be capable of doing. The twin 274s we've done on cars that are as high as 1100 wheel. Uh, we could probably get a little bit more out of them, but in situations like that, I'd probably recommend a third pump or two 525s instead of the twin 465s. So this video is just meant to be kind of like a quick overview of your different options available in the, the marketplace and at the end of the day, what your fuel pump has to do is supply the adequate amount of pressure at a certain amount of fuel flow with a certain amount of input voltage. And what that boils down to is if you're moving a certain amount of air, you need to be moving a certain amount of fuel with that. And how much fuel you need to move is dependent on how much air you are moving. So which setup is right for you is really going to depend ultimately on 
how much air you're moving, which can loosely be correlated with how much power you're making and also with, what, with which, which fuel you are trying to make said power. So in conclusion here, we kind of have every option you need from both the mild setup where you're just using a fuel pump booster on a stock fuel pump assembly. That goes for your GT500s as well. The pricing is different for the GT500 since they all require two fuel pump boosters um, with the exception of the 1112s which require one and then two separate harnesses. Set that aside. Uh, this is kind of like the what we'll call the midway option that we find a lot of people doing and then eventually upgrading to the final solution, which is a aftermarket return style hat. We offer a plug and play fuel system with an aftermarket return style hat with twin 274 pumps. That option is 1650. A lot of the options you'll find in this range are in the range of 1050 to $1,500. So if you're looking to do the one and done method, I'd recommend going with a aftermarket fuel hat style return fuel system, whether that be hours or four or otherwise. Um, our kit is very well thought out. The wiring we've set up for it's very easy to plug and play and it functions like a factory fuel pump. It shuts off if you're in an accident and your airbags deploy and the inertia switch is triggered and all that stuff. All that stuff we like to maintain, but at the end of the day, if you have any other questions about what you need to be doing from a fuel system standpoint, what you can expect your fuel system to support or anything like that, feel free to reach out to sales or reach out directly to tuning and be happy to take care of you. If you have any interest in any of these options, we'll put some links in the description below so that you guys can check those out. We'll also have the links to the instructions and everything you need to know about how to install these fuel systems. and. If you guys want to see more content like this or you want us to talk about something else, uh, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Reach out to us and let us know what you guys want to hear about or learn about or any of the above. But uh, until then, like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day, guys.